Hi there, Larch. This is Chris. Hi, hi Chris. Hi there, and um, thanks for joining me. So, just just quickly, what's what's the situation like in the tunnel right now? Um, situation is that um, they're still not in the tunnel. They are. They've basically done a big downshaft uh, by the side of you know, our downshaft. Um, they are now extending that along to the side of one of the tunnels. Um, yeah, so they're working right by us. There's like there's. We've got a line of ply, and I think they've got a line of ply between us. But it's like they're working, they're about like six inches away from us. Right. <laughs> Just the other side of some ply. So it's kind of an interesting situation. Yeah, this is crazy. So for anyone who doesn't kind of know what's going on, what's the purpose of the tunnel that you've built down there? So we built these tunnels under Euston Square Gardens because Euston Square Gardens are under threat from HS2. Uh, they've destroyed the other half the gardens last year for a taxi rank and now they want to move the taxi rank temporarily like as if for like 17 years while they redo Houston Station um, and to destroy the other half of the gardens and then it's part of this land grab which is the, the sort of that one of the hidden agendas of HS2 is a massive land grab more land is being taken like this that isn't actually the, lot, the, the railway line itself it's associated development um, and so they would then sell off that they would take public land which is left for people in perpetuity um, and privatise it, sell it off for office stock and make millions of pounds. That's their sort of longer term plan. Um, and so we're here to oppose that, say, protect the gardens and also to help bring about the, the you know, HS2 is going to get cancelled mm. at some point because we're in a climate and ecological emergency and it makes no sense, it's got no business case. We're trying to bring that date forward when it gets cancelled. And we're also trying to then use the cancelling of HS2 to help really shift things around with the climate and ecological emergency so people really start to take appropriate action on it and, act and treat it like an emergency before it's too late because we risk societal collapse and the loss of everything we love mm -hmm. if we don't act really soon. And that's like the science is so clear on that. So that's why we're here in tunnels under Euston Square Gardens because it's the most effective thing we can do to address that wider climate and ecological emergency and bring about the system change that we need. The system that created these problems is the same system that created HS2. So we need to change all of that. And HS2 is our opportunity to bring about that change. That's incredible. It's amazing that you've got, gone about that yourself and and almost put yourself in that danger for this cause. Um, anyone who's listening who would like to get involved um, to support this resistance, what would you what would you advise people do? Um, so uh, yeah, we need uh, like well, there's, just, there's a, you know a few of us in this tunnel, but there's like we're, there are thousands that are behind us and, and supporting us in different ways, and everyone can play their role. So yeah, I would encourage people to dig tunnels if they're up for it. Um, but we can there's very quite a simple sort of thing to do. We can give people lots of tips on that um but you can also do anything anything you love to do you can do it in support of this movement you know the, people can write to their mp to, to get them to support the climate and ecological emergency bill to cancel hs2 and to cancel this eviction they can contact the health and safety executive to get them to actually do their job and, and make sure this is done in a safe way they can support our fundraiser they can you know if you love to do art you could do some art for it we need help right you know, with writers, we need yeah. whatever, you know, literally every, every every job there is going, whatever people love to do, you can do it to support this. Yeah. And you can do it from home or you can come to the camps or do it in your community. Um, and what are your sort of next steps now then? Um, so th it, I've seen online and, and stuff that the uh, the conditions are not very good there at the moment. You know, you've got mud seeping in. Is everyone okay down there? Have you got enough food and how are you all sort of getting on? Yeah, we're all getting on really well. It's like really united and strong and our spirits are really high. We're having a laugh. Every day we have a laugh and you know, we're joking and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's really, really good. Um, you know, in, in many ways, we're having a great time. Um, we've got plenty of food and water um, for the moment, at least. Bailiffs are refusing it. But again, we've got sort of people trying to pressure them to, to allow us food and water as part oh, of our human God. rights. Um, but yeah, the, the, the water coming in was because of HS2. I mean, we've, we've built safe tunnels here and they've been going for months and we've had safe tunnels in protests for decades in the UK and no one's ever been hurt in them. But mm. what they did was, the, one of the first things they did when they came in was they took away our water, rainwater control. So we right. had a little system set up for catching the rainwater that and taking the, it away the from the tunnels. Bins, but they've removed that 
and they haven't reinstated a sufficient alternative. So that's why we're now getting, you know, more water coming down than we had before. Mm. Yeah, it's a dangerous situation in, in some sense. But it's backfired on them. You know, these things always do. So they are currently kind of struggling with the fact that they've done this downshaft and they've done this parallel tunnel, which is a bit dangerous. And they shouldn't really be doing it that way. And they've done that, and then uh, there's lots of water in there. So they're actually unable to proceed until they can dry the walls and the, 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 the soil out a bit. So they've put this massive fan to try and dry it out. But mm. if they simply, you know, had the rainwater harvesting that we had, uh, it wouldn't have been a problem in the first place. Yeah. So they've created problems for themselves by making these basic mistakes and, and in risking our safety in the process. I'll, uh, I won't take up too much of your time because I know you haven't got much um, charging, you, you know, using your time wisely. Um, but I just wanted to thank you for coming on and, and joining me on this podcast. Um, and uh, I just wish you all the best of luck. Hopefully it, everything goes to plan down there and um, and hope more people get involved with the uh, with the resistance of this project. That's it. I really encourage everyone to get involved in whatever ever level. As I said, check out the Climate Ecological Emergency Bill Alliance. There's a website for that. Check out HS2 Rebellion and Stop HS2. There's websites for them as well. That's brilliant. All right, thanks, Large. Thanks so much for coming on. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, best of luck. Stay safe.